turned him into a cactus. What the f Wow. Hey everyone, I'm George, and today we're going to ask and answer one simple question. What if we shifted the types of the Sinnoh starters? And what does that even mean? Basically, we're gonna switch the types of the starters around clockwise. Why specifically in that direction? You'll have to ask Elodin, who came up with this idea. He gave me this prompt in a sketch of Piplup with a cactus on top of its head. I wouldn't think about it too hard. Obviously Piplup required the least amount of work out of all of the starters, since I already had a half-finished sketch as a base I could build on. You can see I struggled a bit with the shape of the cactus hat and then couldn't quite nail how firm or soft I wanted it to look. At some point I wanted to model it after a Sikh turban or an Indian Rajas hat to continue Piplop's theme of royalty but I dropped this idea of its evolutions. The color scheme Elodin chose wasn't quite doing it for me either, so I opted for something more similar to a Maractus, closer to Piplop's original color scheme. Because the silhouette is so radically different, I thought it's important to keep the colors similar to the, to the original as to not overwhelm the viewer. With three designs like these, it's very important to be as conservative as possible with the first evolutionary stage, since it's basically the viewer's entry point into the redesigned series. The second, especially the third stage, can be radically different, but it's very important that viewers are able to take a single look at the first stage and immediately recognize, oh, that's Piplop. Of course, this does mesh with the overall philosophy adopted with the design series as a whole. Pipoke, the cactus Pokemon. Pipoke lives in the desert and stores moisture inside its huge head, which is covered in thorns to drive away other Pokemon trying to steal its water. When the head gets too full, Pipoke has difficulty balancing, often falling head first into the sand. Despite its thorny appearance, Pipoke loves attention, and those that showed affection despite being pricked earned its trust, leading to the Pokemon gladly sharing its water with them. My initial approach, the initial keyword to my approach, was silhouette. I wanted to introduce a single new dominant element to each design in a way that recontextualizes the, mo the mons. With Perturbrig I decided to focus on its tongue. The most obvious approach would be to swap the leaves on its head with twin flames and call it a day, the most conservative approach, but I think at that point it would basically just be a color swap, which isn't cutting it. In my muck video I went over something similar with water, the water type variation. I continued the design guidelines set by Piplop and gave Tertzburg a massive tongue of molten lava, again completely changing its silhouette. I could have pushed this even further and in hindsight I think I should have, but I was worried I'd be pushing it too hard. Unlike Piplop, the color shift in Tertzburg ended up being much more dramatic. Turtwick, the magma Pokemon. A near endless supply of searing lava flows down this Pokemon's tongue from within its stomach, fueled by the soil and rocks it melts down. Its shell hardens as it eats more minerals, but its favorite meal is molten magma, and as such are often found around active volcanoes. Turtwick will lick anything that catches its eye, usually to disastrous result. <laughs> Chimchar took by far the most work out of the three, both on and off screen. Right off the bat, I knew I wanted to play off Infernape's Sun Wukong theme, the idea of an ancient warrior, but transplant into a different part of the world, so I chose to make Water Chimchar a guardian of Atlantis. There were a lot of problems with the design process. I couldn't figure out how much I wanted it to stay a monkey and how much of it to turn into a fish. I even made some attempts at turning it into a full mer mermaid, and I struggled a lot with getting its colors to look right. I ended up settling on giving it a mask, but I couldn't get it to look right, nor get past the very strong ghost-type vibe the Lost City has, and the fine look I settled on looks a bit too much like a fusion of Chimchar and Modkip, rather than being its own design. I am satisfied with how the colors turned out overall, but I think there's still something missing from the design. I just don't really have the experience to be able to recognize what that missing thing is. Chimshore, the masked Pokemon. Chimshore makes its home along the edges of seaside crags, where it scavenges the beach for food during the night and idly rests away from danger on its cliffside nest during the day. 
Chimshore never moves too far from clay deposits, as it needs to constantly add wet clay to its mask to maintain it. Anyone trying to peer behind its mask is viciously attacked. It is said that Chimshore came from an ancient sunken city and longs to return there one day. So there we have it, the first stage of Sinostardus with their types shifted. I have to admit, Turtwig's my favorite of a lot, but I'm biased. Turtwig's always been my favorite of all starter Pokemon. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Make sure to stay tuned for our next video where we'll go over the next evolutionary stage. Until then, it's time for the reaction segment. Oh, he's so cute! I love this little guy! Ah, you turned him into a cactus! Congratulations, you've made it to the end. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, share it with your friends, etc, etc. And if you have any ideas of your own of what I should draw next, feel free to comment down below. Bye bye.